Hi everyone, I'm Allie with the Potomac Bead Company and I'm going to show you today how to do this pretty little simple netted necklace. Um, it can be done as a necklace, it could be done as a bracelet, it lends itself more to a necklace than a bracelet. And it's a nice, simple, easy, fast seed bead project that you don't need a lot of seed bead experience to do. So it's a great project for beginners. And for this one here, we used 4mm Swarovskis, we used 11 O seed beads in two colors, and we used 6 by 10 millimeter faceted check glass rondelles. For my project, I'm going to switch it up a little bit, and I'm going to use some 5x8 blue aventrine. I'm using the same 4mm Swarovskis. I'm using these in the sapphire color. I'm also going to use the galvanized silver and galvanized gold seed beads. Along with the clasp, the clasp that I'm using is a silver extender chain with a silver lobster, as well as two wire protectors for the ends of my necklace. In addition to that, I'm going to be using some wildfire beading thread. I'm doing green thread since I'm working with blue beads. The green color lends itself really well to the blues. And I'm using it in point zero zero six. I have a size 10 English beading needle. And lastly, I have my thread burner. And that's going to be the materials that I'm going to work with to recreate this necklace in a little bit different size and with this nice blue sapphire color. So to get started with my project, I threaded my needle. And I did cut a good um, two arms lengths worth of thread, so I'm looking at about five feet of thread. And what I'm doing first is I put on a stop bead. A stop bead is a bead that's just gonna stop the beads from falling off. It's usually a bead that doesn't match any of the beads in my project, just that way I remember to take it off. If you need help putting on a stop bead or knowing how to add a stop bead, check out our other little seed bead technique videos. I am leaving myself about a five inch tail. That's gonna be used to put my clasp on later and I'm gonna use that later on. So I'm keeping a fairly long tail. My first pattern I'm gonna start out with is I'm gonna be building this bracelet in sections. So I'm not building one row then the other row. It's getting built as it goes. So you're building it inch by inch. To start out, I'm gonna be using my sapphire color in my crystal and I'm using my silver color in place of the green beads here. I'm gonna be using my gold color exactly where these are as my little accent color. So to start out, I have strung one of my crystals that is flanked by my two silvers. Next, I'm gonna string one set of my next beads. My next set is going to be my accent color, which is my gold, followed by four of my A color, and one of my B's. So my golds are my B, my silver is my A. So you're gonna do B, four A's, and a B. After that, we wanna put on our rondelle, and the rondelle is gonna go right up next to my first set of beads. The rondelle is always gonna have gold beads on the side of it, whereas the crystal is always gonna have the silver beads on the side of it. So I have my rondelle in place, and then I'm gonna do one of my B bead, my gold, and four of my A beads, my silver. To get this to look like our sample, what we're gonna do is grab onto that first A bead, or that first B bead, sorry, that first gold bead. I'm sewing back through that first gold bead that is on my project. That's gonna make this little triangle effect that I'm gonna be doing throughout the whole project. Next, I'm gonna get ready to string my next set of my crystals. So I know my crystals are surrounded by my silvers. So I'm gonna put on my 11-0 crystal, 11-0 in the silver. Next, I'm gonna add one of my gold, just as I did before, four silvers and one gold. I'm going to let them drop down next to, oh, my fault, we don't need that gold there, we're going to take that off. Sorry about that, I'm getting ahead of myself. So we have on our one gold and our four silvers. Next what we're going to do is attach it to this last rondelle, and basically we're going to use the gold bead that's on the side of the rondelle. So rather than putting on a new one, we're going to hook up and add on to that one that's already there. That's going to make this little zigzag pattern, that little V pattern that you see repeated over and over. Next I'm going to pick up another one of my rondelles and put that right in place. 
After the rondelles are always gold beads. So I'm gonna add a gold bead and then I'm gonna add four of my silver beads. Go back up through that first gold bead that you added after your crystals. Pull your wire through and you're starting to see the netting effect. One thing you wanna make sure is to pull your thread nice and tight so you don't see any extra thread in this project. And this really just gets repeated the whole length of the necklace, but I'm gonna do a couple more for you to see really what's going on. So again, we're starting off by putting on our crystals, which are surrounded by our A color. After that, we're gonna put on one of our B, four of our A's. Let those drop. And we're gonna pick up the gold bead here, the B color of the last rondelle. Sewing down towards the bottom. And that's gonna bring that next zigzag in place. Once I have that pulled tight, I'm gonna pick up another one of my, rondelle, my rondelles and put it in. And this just does not wanna stay flat. I add another one of my gold beads and then four more of my A color, my silver. Once I have those on, I'm gonna bring my rondelle to sit in place by going back through the first B color bead after I put on the crystal. Pull nice and tight. And there you have your next little section. I'll do it one more time for you and then I'm gonna continue working a little bit. So I've got my crystals surrounded by seed beads. I'm gonna put on one B color, four of my A color. Go down through that last bead on the side of the rondelle. So down through that B color bead, that gold one. Make sure I'm pulling nice and tight. Put on another rondelle. Followed by one of my B's, my golds and four of my A, my silver. Back up through the first B bead after the crystal. Give a nice tight pull to make sure that I'm not seeing any thread while I'm working on my project. And I'm getting my nice design going. That's gonna have the nice kind of graduated effect a little bit with that bigger bead on the bottom and the smaller bead at the top. And I'm gonna continue working in this zigzag pattern going back through the gold beads. So I'm just showing here, I'm continuing to build my project along the way because it is smaller on the bottom or smaller on the top and bigger on the bottom. That's what's gonna get it that rounded effect. The more you have a size difference like this one, that rounded effect happens a little bit sooner. And I'm just gonna keep going and building my building my necklace as I go. So I'm just showing my necklace here as I'm getting a little bit further along in my design and pattern. You can see there's a curvature that's starting to happen. And really you get into the swing of things just doing the pattern of one silver, one crystal, one silver, one gold, four silvers, and then down through the gold here. One thing you do want to make sure is that you're holding a lot of tension on it. So each time I'm done, I kind of pull at the bottom of my row. And then I do my next little rotation of beads, which is a rondelle gold, four silvers, and then back up through the gold. And I just repeat that over and over and over again, the whole length along my bracelet. Again, as I get to those golds, I do give a fair amount of tension there. So that way when I'm pulling it, I'm not gonna have tons of extra thread showing at the end. And you get into a rotation where you don't even really have to think about what you're doing. You just need to be able to count to four. And you just keep going over and over with the same thing. Give a nice pull at the end and continue on with your rotation. And I'm gonna continue building on so that way the necklace is full. I am gonna make the necklace 16 inches. 
uh, maybe even 15 so it sits short and that's why I'm going to use an extension chain so that way I have a couple inches to play with depending on what I'm wearing it with. So I'm about to reach the end of my 15 inches that I wanted to get and I'm just going to finish this row here in this little last inch section and I'm going to show you then how I finish. So I'm going up through the last gold bead here giving a nice tight pull and then what I'm going to do is get ready to finish off my last piece and add my clasp as well. So my last piece is going to repeat the beginning here which my beginning is just seed bead crystal seed bead. So I have my seed bead, my crystal, or my seed bead and those go right up next to the last little piece that I did. After that, I'm going to get ready to attach my clasp. So I have my wire protectors. You don't need to use wire protectors with this sample here. Um, we did not use wire protectors. Um, so it's kind of up to you. Since I have them, I'm going to use them. With the wire protectors, I'm going up through the little section. And I'm going to go down the other side. And that thread's just going to hang out right in that little U-channel. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew through my clasp, which is just a lobster clasp, and put that right in to that center section of my wire protector. I'm going to go back down through my seed bead, my crystal and my seed bead, and pull nice and tight. That's going to get that end really on there. I never want to just keep one piece of thread as my clasp because there's a lot of tension always on the clasp. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the steps that I did here and I'm going to go back through this last little triangle of beads down through the rondelle and just repeat exactly what I did. This is just going to reinforce it then. And I'm going to go back up through that same bead. It's going to start to get tight through those beads. And you might have to wiggle your needle a little bit. And I'm going to go back up through again here. And I'm going to sew through that wire protector again. So I'm going to go up through the side of the wire protector. which is just going to hang out right there on the thread. Go through the clasp down the other side of the wire protector and back through the seed bead crystal and seed bead that's going to get two strands going through that wire protector so that way it's not rubbing and that's why I'm using the, the wire protector it's not rubbing on my clasp and my thread's just kind of protected in there you can if you want give a little squash to your wire protector and make it a little bit more of a teardrop shape than it was. And what I'm going to do with my thread here is just knot the thread off. And then do a little dab of glue or my thread burner. I have my thread here. I'm making a loop. Going through that loop. Make sure I'm not grabbing my tail there. And below my last 11-0 here, underneath my crystal, I'm pulling nice and tight and that's going to get a little knot. I'm going to go along my line. And I'm going to pick up over here and do the same thing, doing that little half hitch knot. I've got two of those half hitch knots now, and I'm just going to sew down through my project, and then I'm going to burn off my thread. And like I said, you can glue it where those knots are. It's kind of up to you. When I'm here at the bottom, I'm going to do one more of my half hitch, because I have enough thread to and then I'm going to burn off my extra thread. Get my burner, press the button so I know it's nice and heated, and just burn right through there. And that's how I'm going to do the end and the clasp. I'm going to repeat the same thing on the other side by taking my bead, my stop bead here, I'm going to take my stop bead right off the other end, and I'm going to repeat just like I did using the wire protector and instead of the lobster I'm going to be attaching and adding the chain. Once you get done the piece you have a really really pretty simple necklace 
that a nice thing, like I was saying with the extender chain is, you can wear it at this 15 inch length that I created, or you can wear it the whole way at 18 inches. So that way it gives a variety of lengths that you can wear a necklace like this, because it does take a little bit long to make. Even though it's a simple stitch, you can kind of stitch away and keep making and making. But it takes a fair amount of time to make that length of stitch. Again, something to keep in mind is you can use a lot of different things for this. If you want it to be a little bit bolder, you can use six millimeter crystals, you can use six millimeter gemstones. Um, it's really up to you. You could even use uh, eight millimeter rounds or 12 millimeter rounds here at the bottom. So you can change a bit. The number that you, or the difference that you have between your top bead and your bottom bead is gonna affect the curvature. So the difference when it's a lot greater is gonna affect the curvature more than when it's a lot smaller. You do want different sizes though from your top to your bottom row so that you do have some of that curvature to you. Again, I have a four millimeter basically and a five millimeter with my rondelle because it's a five by eight. So I do have a little bit difference of a size and that's what creates that little bit of a lay to it that it's creating this little bit of this oval shape that's gonna look really great when it's on the neck. So hopefully you get a chance to make one of these, have fun, enjoy using up beads and gathering new stuff as well. And if you have a chance, watch some of our other YouTube videos. We'd love to see your comments on it and hopefully you enjoy them. Also, if you get a chance, check out our Facebook page to get regular updates. Also go to our website, potomacbeads.com, check out our locations page, and we'd even love to see you in one of our physical store locations. Thanks a lot for watching.